Hello everyone, this is Shannon for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, we are going to do some no-line watercoloring using this gorgeous stamp set called the Iris U and some Tombow Dual Brush Pens. This is the Iris U combo set. It comes with the Iris U stamp set in the front, and in the back of the cloud storage bag, you have the matching dies. Today, I'll only be using the stamp set though. I have an A2 panel of Bristol paper, and I'm going to stamp the main image from the set in antique linen distress ink in the lower left corner and I will ink it up twice and stamp it twice just so it's a little bit darker and easier to see. After I stamped it in the left corner I then reposition the stamp and then I stamp it in the upper right corner. Again stamping it twice so it's a little bit more visible because this is a really light color. Once I finish stamping the panel I'm now ready to watercolor. My Tombow dual brush pen numbers are on screen so you can follow along. I'm going to start by spraying some water down onto my water media mat and then I will grab my marker and then outline that upper two thirds of the petal with the marker directly to paper. The nice fine tip of these markers makes this really easy to do. Once I finish outlining then I will grab a number two round brush and grab a little bit of water that I spray down onto my mat and then go over with that damp brush that marker edge and that's going to activate that ink and then I will pull that ink down over the petal to create a nice soft gradation. To improve my gradation or make it look more dramatic, I like to scribble some of that marker color down onto the mat and then pick it up with my brush and then apply it back to my petal. By doing that, my purple is going to be a little bit more intense and you'll see more of a change from the dark to the light and that just results in a much prettier petal. It's also important when you're creating your gradations to make sure you clean your brush and then dry it and then pick up some new water. That way you can definitely get those lighter shades of purple as well. Now I'm switching to a yellow, just colored a little bit of that yellow at the base and then blended it out with my brush. Once I've finished with the yellow, I'm going to move on to another petal and start the process again. Again outlining that upper two thirds and then blending it out to make a nice gradation on the petal. I will come back to that first petal though in just a second. Now I'm coming back to it with kind of like an orange color just at the very base of the petal and blend that out. This just kind of makes a nice transition from that yellow to the orange. Again, creating nice gradations on the petal really does make for a prettier petal. I'm now going to repeat this process and work my way around this panel coloring all my petals. Here I'm coloring a bud. The buds are really simple. I'm just using that purple, no yellow, no orange here, and starting at the base of the bud with my darkest outlining at the very base and then blending it out to the very tip of the petal. So a little reverse here on coloring, but very, very simple to do. Now I'm back to one of the petals and again repeating that process outlining the upper two thirds and then blending out the petal. I do work on these petals kind of in sections. You kind of saw me do it on that very first petal. I did the purple first, then I did the yellow immediately after. I can do that because the purple and the yellow don't ever meet so I don't have to worry about the two colors mixing because purple and yellow mixing wouldn't be very good. That would kind of create mud. And I also stopped and made sure the yellow dried completely before I introduced the uh, orange. The reason I did that is because if I introduced the orange while the yellow was still wet, it would just kind of bleed together and mix together and it'd have one flat color and not that nice gradation from orange to yellow to, to the white of the paper. So that's why I waited till that dried completely before I introduced the orange. So now I'm just continuing working my way around this panel, making coloring all the petals and all the flowers, and this is just really starting to come to life. I do have the stamp set nearby so I can kind of refer to it if I'm not sure something is a petal or a bud or a leaf, just to figure everything out. Once I finished coloring you can kind of see all the beautiful lines and details and that was just from the stamped um, image. I didn't actually color all those beautiful little veins in the petals. I'm now working on the leaves here. I'm going to start with a light kind of olive green and outline the very tip of the petal or of the leaf I'm sorry and then outline the lower part of the leaf with a darker color and then again just like I did with the petals I kind of blend it out with a slightly damp brush. I did also take a little bit of that darker color and scribble it onto my mat 
and brought that back in just to make my darks a little bit darker. And now I'm going to continue to work my way around this uh, bunch of irises, coloring in all the greenery, all the stems, all the leaves. Again, I start with that lighter color, color that out first, and then I'll move to my darker color. Here I'll slow it down, just do a leaf one more time for you guys, kind of slow it down again. Start with my lighter color outline, kind of the upper two thirds, and then the lower third I brought in my darker shade. And again, direct to, direct to paper with the marker. Once I finished doing the outlines, I then just blended the two colors together with a damp brush. Very simple to do and the greenery goes really fast. I actually probably about a third of the time that it actually took me to do all of the petals. I continue to work my way around finishing up this last little bunch of stems and leaves and just basically greenery here on these irises and once I finish that up my water coloring is completely done. I'll hold up to the camera here so you can hopefully get a good look at these leaves. They're actually very easy to do and I think the two colors the lighter and the darker green really bring them to life. Now that I've finished coloring this, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. This sentiment is again from the Iris U stamp set. It just says happy birthday and I stamped it in VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is a really nice black ink. I then trimmed my panel down about an eighth of an inch on all the sides, so just a small amount just so I have a nice little white border from the card base. I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back side of my panel, just center it on my white card base and adhere it down. And I'll hold the card up to the camera so you can again get a good look at all the water coloring. This is actually the second time that I made this card. For the second card, I uh, stamped a different sentiment, so it's a little different sentiment than you see in the pictures here at the end. Um, I just wanted to have another birthday card because I actually gave the original to my mom for Mother's Day. But I really like how this turned out, and it's actually surprisingly very easy. A little time consuming, but very easy. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Waffle Flower and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.